Hi. I 100% endorse this. Trump's visiting London today. Um, I don't normally like to get into politics. I've just been dragged into it, as I've said many a time. And um, he's a buffoon, but he gets things done. You know, I'm not bothered by him. But it's just funny seeing all the far lefties get kind of triggered by him arriving and stuff. Because Sargon's there today. He's, I think he's going to be interviewing some people on the ground. And uh, I posted a picture of socialist banners that they've put up in London. And um, I'm so glad that I have friends who are against kind of feminism and socialism. Because I've got a, a friend on uh, Facebook just kind of cringing at the banners and it's awesome that I have, I have friends like that who aren't just complete like far left extremists um, I used to and I don't think I could um, put up with them I mean people say you're meant to stay friends with people uh, even because of their politics um, I can do that in certain scenarios but if someone's too much of a feminist or too too far left, um, it's really not very easy to for me to engage with them because I'm I'm completely against that stuff and it screws with my life like on a regular basis. Um, to know that all the things I love are being kind of corrupted and all the chances I have at work and housing and stuff is is uh, limited even more than it would normally be um, and I'm demonized for things I want to do and things I want to be like like normal behaviors and for my skin color um, and for my biological sex and things like that you know I can't put up with people like that and uh, I can't really have them as friends to be honest it's too difficult to actually I mean, a lot of people find a way, and you can have, like, frenemies, I guess, where, you know, you hate what they stand for, but uh, you can be civil and talk together. I think maybe there's a few people I can talk to on that level, but it's not many, to be honest. I'm not very good at doing that. Um, I had one friend who, like, told me he was, like, he was far left and he was pro-violence, like, he th thought violence was, like, fine and stuff. And I just, like, there's no way that I could keep in touch with that person. And, uh, there's a bunch of other people who are just, like, feminist ideologues. And they were just constantly spouting this feminist garbage. And I just couldn't, I mean, I couldn't really talk to them like I used to because I knew they were spewing this stuff that was against me and that kind of harmed my chances at getting work and stuff and and wanted like I was like talking to this girl on on Twitter who I met and she suddenly comes out like oh yeah I'm a Marxist I'm like what what on earth you so like you support this regime that that killed millions and millions of people and you support what's going on in Venezuela right now and she's like making like excuses and talking around the points but basically saying like yes that's yeah that's basically what I support <laughs> and it's like ah, oh, I mean I can't keep talking to you like that I mean we could keep talking but I'd just be like what why why do you what <laughs> why why do you believe in these things you know and you agree with the stuff that's being pushed against people like me? Uh, I don't, I don't know how to easily get along with people like that. I mean, it's the same with Christians, I guess, if they're non-devout. Like, I have one friend who, I think she's a Corbyn supporter, or she was a Corbyn supporter, maybe she still is. And, I mean, I still talk to her and stuff, but it's because she doesn't really talk about that stuff out loud very often. You know, she's not devout to her cause. Um, I had a friend in uni, a flatmate in uni, should I say, who was ridiculously devout Christian. Um, I couldn't really get along with her 
because she was so up in your face about God and stuff. But I've had other friends who are Christians and they're absolutely fine to hang with because they don't fucking talk about God and Christianity all the time and if you're an atheist then they're kind of fine with it, like you're an atheist, I'm a Christian, so what, you know, you think what you think, I think what we think, but we can still talk about the other subjects that have nothing to do with it and that both kinds of person enjoy, you know. I 100% endorse this. I'm so out of practice at this vlogging stuff and when I get out of practice I kind of recede back into myself because I'm an introvert and I just start getting shy again and scared of vlogging uh, because I haven't been doing it in a while it's kind of like my timidity is is coming back in and taking over and I'm more scared <laughs> of, of trying to, to talk and what people think of me when I try to talk and so I talk less and I over moderate what I'm saying more I self censor more and it's not not very good I guess if I did more vlogs more often then it wouldn't be like this I'd be more of the brash self that you sometimes see like when I did those rocky reviews or something I'd come out of myself a little more but I've redone my room and everything and I've got a slightly fresher outlook than when there was just mess everywhere but it's um, still not what I want for my privacy and my ability to come out of my shell and, and feel free to say things. I don't know why I'm talking about freedom of speech when I live in Britain man because it's not here anymore. Yeah, maybe that's part of it, you know, I feel like I can't discuss certain subjects because like the far left are in control of lots of systems and things like social media they're weaseling their way into games they're already dominant in films and uh, things i used to watch it's just like like i have so much i could say and so many topics to cover but i can't even get started on 95 percent of them because I feel like if I start talking about something mild, I'll get accusations or like people will be angry or they'll try and weasel their way into making me like making like normal things I say sound like hate crimes or stuff. Like there's someone I used to know and she's like demonizing like flirting and compliments and stuff. So, I mean, that's a big part of me when I'm more confident, is that I kind of, that's my, that's part of my personality. The kind of side of me that likes love stuff and, and flirting and playfulness is kind of repressed right now, really strongly. Um, so I don't feel free and, and I'm this, I'm this little quiet little thing right now because there's so many things that, that I could say but I don't feel like I can even get started beginning to say them. I like beginning to be who I am because there are people who come at you and demonise everything that you are so you can't be who you are because it's not allowed. So I don't feel free here to talk to be, uh, to be. I think social media is a huge part of the problem, or the way we engage each other, but at the same time I think humans are like that without social media. And also keeping hold of social media just allows you to, if you're someone like me who makes friends more in other countries than locally in the country I'm in, it just allows you to keep in contact with the friends you do have, because they're in different countries. And, um, but it does change the way you talk to people and, and it's not good for argumentation really just kind of exacerbate things and make them worse um, especially things like Twitter I 100% endorse this um, I quite enjoyed Twitter when I was on there but things just kept getting more and more authoritarian and like when you have, when you're just posting normally as you do and then suddenly things like a suspension comes in, uh, 
even if it's like something like you have been suspended for for we think you might be a robot and you're spamming and then they want your email or whatever to reactivate i just i'm not i'm not really comfortable with twitter or any social media just becoming like that you know i'd rather not be on it like i'd rather not restart my account i mean it's i'm not like banned off twitter or anything i could restart my account now i could reclaim it now and nothing had happened but at the same time just just suspending suspending people for people like that that's in the rules now like not only can you uh, can you get like reported really easily for doing nothing banned really easily for doing nothing have a real suspension brought against you for doing nothing but they're suspending you for bad guesses that you're not even a person a human and then they want your personal details to prove you're not a bot that posts stuff and it's like it's not just they're getting your personal details to prove you're not a bot it's also like they're having a, a key to your identity and who you are so they can know you and locate you and contact you and get to you easier if they think that you're not politically aligned with them later on and i'm not happy with doing that i'd rather be on mines or something you know i 100 percent endorse this i was thinking back to when i lived in bath recently i really liked living there i did like the short time i had there once i got to the end of it because i was feeling depressed i thought i'm not gonna miss this place I'm going back to Devon and I'll be quite happy to return. But that's only because I went through some bullshit hardships there where two friends, maybe three friends, who were in the vicinity, who I was kind of counting on for someone, some people to meet me while I was there and hang out with. Um, you know, so I had a life, so I could uh, uh, just have a, a social life while I lived there. I met them, I met one of them once, and I talked to the other one briefly, and then they never came and met me, or, or never wanted to make plans to hang out with me during the whole of the rest of my time there, and that just suddenly... And as well, I went there to look for jobs to sustain me. And in the end, I couldn't sustain a stay further than my six-month tenancy at that flat. Um, yeah, it was six months I stayed there, not one year. So I spent my time there. I was very active. I was job hunting like fuck. And I was... I applied a over 200 places I think um, I just kept applying and applying I must have applied at almost every um, if you go into Bath City Centre like every shop that you see on the high street every business you can see in Bath I've applied there like everything everything you can fucking see I've gone in I've applied there and out of all that I only got so it was like 200 places or more. I only got like six interviews total. And I only got two yeses to my interviews. And they happened at exactly the same time, so I had to choose. One was a clothing store, and one was a little corner shop convenience store. Very busy. And uh, I ended up choosing wrongly, I think. I chose the convenience store place, and I did work there. I worked there for two to three weeks, four weeks maybe, um, and it was a full, it was proper full time job. It even it even had extremely late evening shifts. Some of the hours were, some of the days were twelve day. Brilliant. Fucking, it's in my mind is fucked. Some of the work I did there was 12 hour days that's what i'm trying to say and it was like like 
11 a.m. There's like an hour break, so like 10 a.m. until 11 p.m. at night. I'd never worked like that before. I mean, I've hardly had that many jobs in my life at all, really. I've had like three or four or something. No, a little more than that, but I've worked at some places just so short. They don't even count in my mind like a week or two. Um, I ended up leaving this place mainly because of one guy who was who I define as an actual racist. I'm not talking like how SJWs define racists. This guy was blazingly sorry, brazen about his racism. Like uh, he even said to me like. Oh, we're all racist here. Some people are naturally racist. Uh, some, I think, I just think racism is okay around here. Like, and you know, there were various customers who come in, and some of them would be obviously from foreign countries. And he just, just be like taking the piss of them um, when they'd uh, leave and stuff after they bought whatever they're buying, and. He was awful to work with because, like, uh, you just ask him questions about what you're meant to do. And he wouldn't fucking tell you. He'd just expect you to know already, somehow, and do them. And it's like, uh, uh, what? so, um, like, what What do I do for this particular task? And he'd just, like, go, oh, fucking get on with it, mate. And, like, get on with what? Like... I don't know what what's going on. What what do, what is this thing that we're meant to do? Like, just do it, mate. Just do it. Like, do what? <laughs> like, so, like, I'm asking him how how they do the papers and they take out the papers, and he just fucking like not help me and just tell me to do it. And like, I'm asking him how to close up, and he's just like, just just get on with it and stuff <laughs> like. What the, what's wrong with people when you go and work for a place what's wrong with people who don't answer your questions it seems to be quite a common thing like people don't want to help you know what you're meant to do they've worked there for so long and they've got this weird irrational mindset that says everyone knows how to do our job even if they've never been here Fucking and uh, it just got so bad so bad to the point where I had to hand in my notice um, so I only end up working there a month. It was like really extreme shifts that I did work. It did feel like I worked there for a season because it was uh, 12 hours a day, um, five days a week. Yeah, and uh, the other workmates were great. The, the boss was fairly chilled. There's this kind of lesbian workmate, and she was really cool. There's uh, this um, young father dude. He's, he was kind of, uh, his, he had black hair, but his facial expressions and things were very like Chris Pratt. You know, the guy from that uh, Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy and that Jurassic World shit. He, he had uh, very similar expressions to that dude. He was cool. And there was also a, like a guy, a foreign dude who worked there. He was really cool. I only got to see him a couple times, though. Um, so he was f from uh, Czechoslovakia, or is it just Slovakia now? Did Czechia, Czechia and Slovakia split? Anyway, he's from Slovakia. I think he was like called Slovakian Stan. And he was really chilled and really nice. And uh, fuck, I think he was sad that I left. Um, where I heard from the the guy who looked like Chris Pratt that um, he was wondering why I was leaving or something but he, he wasn't there that much I think I only met him and worked with him like two or three days out of the four months so yeah but I couldn't I couldn't, couldn't fucking work with that guy I was also brought to tears by a few customers just like abusing the fuck out of me um while I was serving them like a lot worse than where I work now luckily they had some kind of store policy there where people who act like that they catch them on CCTV because uh, they have CCTV behind the desk looking at all customers. They identify them and, and say, we're not going to serve this person from now on. We're going to turn them away if they come in again. Like for harassing staff. And I would class that as like actual harassment of staff. It's like when 
someone tries to buy something from you and then they're just fucking screaming at you. Where I work now at the health food store for my family isn't a morally fulfilling job because we sell crap that doesn't work or does bad things to people and isn't scientifically proven. But working there at that fucking convenience store, there was I realised that there were tons of other stuff that weren't morally fulfilling for me to sell either. Like there was uh, gambling stuff with the lottery and stuff. There was these fucking magazines, like Pond Life fucking celeb gossip magazines and shit. And we had to sell fucking tobacco and smoke products. We had to sell fucking alcohol to people who were drunk when they came in the store at night. And then they bought alcohol and they got more drunk. And then they came back in and they were drunk and they got more fucking alcohol. And I don't know. There was there was a couple of other things I can't recall right now. Just like these things. I don't want to work in a place that sells these uh, morally abhorrent products to people and just fuels the never-ending cycle of accepting bullshit things. I know that I guess it's freedoms. It is freedoms so, to have your alcohol and to have your cigarettes or whatever if you want them. But at the same time, I don't want to work at a place that, that sells these things to people and keeps the cycle going. I, you know. But that wasn't as bad as the, the racist colleague who just would not fucking act reasonably. And I just had to leave. And where was I going with this? Well... At my flat in Bath, back home, when I got home after work, I mean, that was a good place. It was really enjoyable. I mean, I'd, I was really sad not to have any of my so-called friends there meet up with me and hang out with me on the regular basis and give me a life. Because apart from that not happening, it, all the bits that I did in isolation on my own were really nice. Like, it was really nice to live in a flat. Supermarket right around the corner, giant park right around the corner. Bath is a beautiful city, uh, great architecture. I love the sandstone stuff there, very touristy, very safe. Um, although working at the convenience store, I did find it seedy underbelly. <laughs> so it wasn't as beautiful by the time I left it than when I went to live there. But yeah, I really enjoyed having the own, my own space of that flat. Uh, being able to have thinking space and movement space and have a home. Um, it was like a small home, but it was a really nice home. And it was spacious enough. Like, I didn't fill the rooms with furniture or anything. I had a bedroom, I had a bed and a crappy canvas wardrobe and chest of drawers. And then I had the other room, it's like my living room. And I just had a, I just had my computer in there and a bookshelf. And that's about it. And um, the people who came to view the house towards the end, like the estate agent people, went, oh, this is remarkably clean. And I thought I was, like, failing to keep it tidy enough for the room inspection, but they're like, no, it's brilliant. I was like, oh, okay. Maybe I'm not as messy as I thought or something. <laughs> and it was a beautiful flat. Very airy, very bright. The windows were beautiful. They looked out over this amazing kind of valley hillside um, with a park and there's a river there and an antenna. And I think I was third floor. Down the bottom there was a cool black dude and his family and he had the garden area mainly. Um, so he'd have like barbecues and things down there. Um, directly below me was like this young young mother person. Um, she was really cool and she talked to me but unfortunately towards the end of the flat she brought her teenage son in to live with her who seemed to hate her guts and also there was a black woman, a black girl living upstairs from me and the annoying teenage son bastard would occasionally pass my door and go upstairs and have loud sex with the black woman living above me. It didn't happen very often but you could tell when it was happening. And it was really annoying. And he was just like a bastard. I could hear him arguing with his mum very loudly when he was downstairs. And then when he was upstairs he was fucking this girl. So that was annoying. But there was something about when I was working at the convenience store. 
Um, sometimes you'd have good days working there. Like, um, I can't remember the name of my, like, lesbian co-worker girl. Uh, she used to, like, call everyone, like, like my love. It's a really endearing term. And she was really kind and and we had a laugh and I think she was into similar metal music as I was. Um, and the other dude was cool. Sometimes you'd have good days and you'd come back from work at like fucking near midnight and I thought, Jesus Christ, how am I gonna... I mean, I'd, I'd walked out at night when I lived at university in Bristol, but I couldn't imagine going out at night like on my own at 11 p.m. on the regular from just going home from work. I thought I'd be mugged. I honestly, you were going down lots of kind of weird back alleys and stuff on the way back to home, and it was quite a long walk, so I'd end up getting home at like midnight if I ended at 11 pm. And um, yeah, I just thought I'd be mugged. At one point, there was a very violent argument going on, like in front of the bridge that I had to cross between a, like, a husband and wife or something, and I just thought I was going to get attacked there if I went too close to them. But I think that's the only time when I actually came close to being attacked by the creatures of the night. You know, the the city-dwelling uh, people who looked a bit dangerous. You know, apart from that, I was scared of being mugged, but I never was mugged. And it was kind of, after a bit, it got to a, it was a really nice atmosphere. Just coming home, nearly midnight. And it was like a summer night. Uh, sometimes it'd be warm with like a cool breeze. And you'd hear all these kind of city voices and it's kind of a nice atmosphere. You get home and it'd be so late, you just kind of have a bit of ice cream or have a little tiny dinner, watch some TV, uh, I just watch cartoons because I was into Family Guy back then and I still watch TV, I don't now. Um, also, Seth MacFarlane, fuck's sake, man. <laughs> If anyone should be sceptical of feminists because their content is attacked by feminists on the regular for nothing and being called sexist, you know, you should be against these people. But no, he seems to be trying to join the far left. Really disappointing. Especially when you see all the stuff in Family Guys, just like, the humour in that seems really reasonable to me. But the actual guy himself is like, his politics are like, backwards from his show, which is really strange. Anyway, I used to watch that when I got back from work, and it's just really enjoyable kind of evenings. Coming back at night, really late, from a job. And um, also, because the supermarket was right around the corner from me, in the daytimes, uh, I didn't have to keep any dinners in the cupboard. Uh, like, the way I do things right now, because I live in, in the middle of nowhere in a village, is I go to a supermarket once a week and I stock up with full bags of food to last me seven days or whatever. Uh, living in Bath, you've got the convenience of, I don't need anything in my fucking cupboards. Um, I can just go out around the corner some point before the evening buy one thing and then just chuck it on the shelf and then cook that in a couple hours and you know you don't have to buy bulk anything you can just go out and then you've got the freedom of not choosing from the stuff you bought for dinner but just choosing anything from the supermarket on the spot like what do I feel like tonight I really like that and the fact that there's a huge just park just around the corner and you could go really nice walks just whenever you want around the park whenever you feel like it. Also I reckon I could have stayed put with that psychotic racist at that convenience store job if I had like a social people who were physically there to come back to and hang out with and talk about my shit job and unwind with but I didn't have that because the friends who I thought were gonna be there for me didn't end up meeting up with me. So I've been thinking about that lately. Um, that might have been one of the best places to live that I've had when I've lived away from my parents. Um, the other one was my first year flat at uni, which was like the top of a mini tower block in Bristol. Uh, that was really nice. The two flats I had after that were worse and uh, not very nice to live at.
it's just a shame, you know. It's so hard to find a job, like a normal job. And uh, it's so hard to find people who just will, like, hang out with you on the regular. And just because they want the same thing, presumably, to take their mind off work and shit. But I guess everyone's got someone else as their friend, so they don't need me as an extra friend or something. I would like devoted friends who are, like, I'm their best one of their best friends and they're one of my best friends so like I'm their first go-to for someone to hang out with in uh, reality I guess but I didn't have that so and then it was back to having my friends in foreign countries who were there for me but obviously it's not easy to just meet up with them I really want to but it takes a lot of planning I 100% endorse this Still don't know if I'm going to upload this, but I need to vent, I need to talk. <sighs> Battlefield 5, I'm still not sold on that fucking game. I've been watching Matty Ace play it. There we go, maybe a triple! Yeah, I don't know, it's not... It doesn't look as good as Battlefield 1. It looks worse, it looks very like Battlefield 1, but worse than it. The gun skins are shit. The map they keep showing just looks like Brusilov Keep, but not as good. There's all these animations just clipping through the ground and stuff. All the new features that I saw Jack Frags talking about, um, he made them sound super exciting and super cool. So I had all these things in my head, wow. You can do rolls, you can catch grenades. There'll be a day and night cycle for, um, there'll be uh, these four days. Was it Grand Campaigns or something? I can't remember the name of it. Grand Ops. Grand Operation. And then you actually get to see it, because they've been showing the alpha gameplay footage now. And it's just terrible. It's it's nowhere near as dramatic or amazing as Jack Frags made it out to be. It's like this shittier version of Battlefield 1. And I don't know, man. I've just seen it now, and I'm like... I mean, fortifications are this really tacky... You've got, glo you've got glowing transparency shit and icons all over your fucking view. Um, the HUD is terrible, by the way. The, like, fortifications aren't just a physics object you can put anywhere because they've got this dumb philosophy at DICE where they want to control everything about... They call it for balance sake, but I don't think it is. They, they want to control um, everything about what the player does, so it's always predictable what every player has the possibility to do. And why would you take that from players? Like, the ability to do unpredictable things and just to do crazy things in the game that the developers weren't even expecting. Why would you take that away? No, I mean, and if the setting isn't true World War II. And uh, the dice devs themselves, like Disney Star Wars um, filmmakers, have been attacking fans. Not not physically attacking them. Like they've been just saying like fans of of the games are the problem and stuff. Well how do you expect people to want to buy your stuff if you demonize your own fans? It's so dumb. <laughs> like and they are a bunch of Swedish SJWs there. I mean you just have to look at the fucking trailer pandering to feminists to, to see that. And it wasn't so bad in Battlefield 1. Um, it was visible, but it wasn't that bad. Um, there were black people in World War 1, I, I have no problem with that at all. There were women in World War 1, there are even women in World War 2, but the way they've portrayed it is ridiculous now. The women were mainly like Russian snipers, and they've got these... <laughs> Weird, paraplegic, uh, fashionable... I don't know if they're going to even be Brits or Germans, but they've got, like, Braveheart blue war paint on. And it's just like, I don't know, they they've, they have a, a, a male character who looks ridiculous. He doesn't look like he's from the period of 1940s at all. Uh, none of the hairstyles are from the 1940s, but this male character, like, he just looks like... Uh, the sort of person you'd see with a top knot, uh, like a hipster walking around, like a hipster vegan walking around London these days. He's got a colossal 
beard and like a shaven head. I don't know, he, there's something about him that they might as well have just added the top knot fashion thing. Like the, you know, the 2017 bullshit fashion that lots of hipsters used to used to wear they probably still do oh god they might have might as well have got the justin bieber swoop emo haircut and just put it on a load of soldiers in that game from whenever that was 2014 or whatever <laughs> it's like what do you have you seen any any uh photos of the 1940s before before you made this game <laughs> like what the fuck and they've got um, some really obscure photo of like an actual squad that existed in World War Two, and, and went, "Ha! This is the justification. <laughs> We've got this really rare fucking squad of people, and now that's going to be a, a common main player class in our game." <laughs> uh, no, I can't. I don't. I'm getting much closer to not buying that game. Uh, yeah, um, not keen on what they're doing. They should have made a Korean War game, or just a World War Two game that was fucking accurate to World War Two in the way people expect it to be, and that looked like a World War Two game. This doesn't even look like a World War Two game. This looks like some weird SWAT game. I 100% endorse this. See, I think to work on vlogs like this, I just need like I just need this place where I can vlog from that I'm comfortable in and I need to enunciate my words and be better with my rhythms and um, maybe plan some videos, know what I'm going to say, think about what I'm going to say, uh, be in a state where I'm more happy and confident before I make a video. Yeah. And I've hit vlogger's block, so that's the end of the video. I don't even know how much of this will be uploaded. If at all. It's a bad vlog. I can tell that already. You see this? The but maybe the more I do it, the better it will get. Brilliant.